Now let's set the record straight. There's no argument over the choice between peace and war. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. Admittedly, there's a risk in any course we follow other than this, but every lesson of history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement. And this is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement. And it gives no choice between peace and war, only between fight or surrender. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, eventually we have to face the final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? When Nikita Khrushchev has told his people, he knows what our answer will be. He has told them that we're retreating under the pressure of the Cold War, and someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary, because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. He believes this because from our side he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price, or better read than death, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. If nothing in life is worth dying for, when did this begin? Just in the face of this enemy? Or should Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard around the world? The martyrs of history were not fools. And our honored dead, who gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis, didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay, there is a point beyond which they must not advance. Winston Churchill said the destiny of man is not measured by material computations. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. And he said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space, which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. Good morning. I'm Bobby Spiegel, I'm the President and CEO for the Corona Chamber. I'm deeply honored to be able to welcome you all here. Before we actually do the presentation of colors and before I bring up my co MC, we just have to realize that life is very precious. When people that are in this room that served our nation, when they signed up for the armed forces, they signed a blank check. They could have not come back home. And most recently, this past week, five Army Aviation Specialist Operation Forces were killed when their helicopter crashed in the Eastern Mediterranean again this past weekend. On the screen, you will see the five Chief Warrant, Warrant Officer 3, Stephen Dwyer, from Clarksville, Tennessee. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Shane M. Barnes, Sacramento, California. Staff Sergeant Tanner W. Grone, from Gorham, New Hampshire. Sergeant Andrew P. Southard, from Apache Junction, Arizona. Sergeant Cargi, Sorry, Sergeant Kale and Wolf from Mancota, Minnesota. Also, one of our sponsors is Veterinaire. Tragically, the founder a month ago on October 3rd at the age of 40 dropped dead. We want to dedicate today to all those men and women that have served our country. He was a veteran. An amazing individual. We'll be sharing more about him 
in a few minutes. But if I could at this time just ask for a moment of silence as we honor those individuals I talked about, but also someone that may be near and dear to your heart. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask Eagle Glenn to have the lights to come back up. And I would like to bring up my co MC. Many of you know him, John Whitehan. John is a, a tremendous server for our chamber and he's an amazing individual. And he's right behind me. We're going to try to keep things flowing. There's a lot of moving parts today. Please welcome John. All right, good morning, everyone. We are awake and the lights are going to come on. And, oh, see? Then there was light. In the beginning. Okay. So, uh, John Wagan, Western States Financial Investments. It's great to be here. Uh, in a moment, we're going to uh, honor our uh, country and our flag. So allow me to introduce the, the men and women who will be uh, helping us with that process. So, uh, bagpipe band from UCR. Yeah, there we go. All right. I didn't wear my kilt. Thank you all are very appreciative of that right now. Uh, University of California, Riverside uh, Pipe Band's mission is to further the tradition, history, and culture associated with the Great Island, bagpipes, and Scottish style of drumming. Mike, Ryan, uh, you were going to wear yours? Yes. Okay, very good, we got it. So, uh, the, also the flags we carry by the Sea Cadets, our local Sea Cadets from the Paul Revere Division. Uh, we have uh, Navy Junior ROTC from Corona High School. Uh, they'll be up on stage joining us. They've actually been bringing breakfast to those that need help with that. Uh, we're blessed today that our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Army veteran, Korean veteran, uh, Walter K. Larkin, who is only 90 years old. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Combat engineer and part of the 31 Infantry Regiment. He'll be escorted by uh, Manuel Cano, who is Member of the Year at our local American Legion Post, Joe Dominguez Post 742. And then finally, we're really blessed today to have uh, Presley Tennant. She's a nationally known singer right here from Norco, California, and she's going to sing our national anthem. So we're all going to they're all going to come in and we're going to do that. So uh, today it's my honor to uh, to celebrate our real heroes. Uh, sometimes we overuse that word hero, but I'm here to we're here today as a chamber and as a community to honor the real heroes in our community. So, if you're currently serving the U.S. military, please stand. If you're currently serving right now, please stand and remain standing, please. If, if you're a gold star family member, please stand. Stay standing, please. Stay standing if you can, please. If you're a blue star family, please stand. Stay standing. If you're a parent, Child or spouse of a military person, stand please. Again, all remain standing. If you're a veteran, reservist, or active duty, please stand. Thank you all for your service for protecting this country. If they love the armed forces, please stand. If for some reason you're still sitting, please stand. So we're going to start the bang pipe, so
He's coming. Present colors. Present arms. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to read the uh, 
DOW owns an actual ceremony. I would like to bring your attention to a group that cannot be with us here today. They answer our nation's highest calling and have yet to return from the fuel of battle. As you enter this room, you may have noticed a small table. This table occupies a place of honor in this room and embodies a great deal of symbolism of which I will now explain. The men and women are commonly called prisoners of war or missing in action. We call them brothers and sisters. They are unable to be with us today, and so we remember them because of their imprisonment or unaccounted for status. Let us remember the United States Army, the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, the United States Air Force, the United States Coast Guard, the United States Space Force. They are not with us here today. To represent them, there is one chair. It is empty, but saved for their hope to return. Let us remember their absence. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing remembrance. The everlasting hope for a joyous reunion with those yet unaccounted for, lest we forget. Remember. The lone candle symbolizes the frailty of a prisoner alone trying to stand up against their oppressors. Remember. The black ribbon reminds us of those who will not be coming home. Remember. The single rose reminds us of the loved ones and families of our comrades in arms who keep the faith and await their return. Remember. The red ribbon, reminiscent of the red ribbon worn upon the lapel and chest thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand proper accounting of their brothers and sisters. Remember, a slice of lemon is on the plate to remind us of their bitter fate. Remember, salt upon the plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. Remember, the glass inverted, they cannot toast with us today. Remember, the red, white, and blue ribbon is tied. It is worn by thousands who await their return. Remember, the Bible represents faith in a higher power and a pledge to our country, founded as one nation under God. Remember those whom we demand who do be depended on in battle. They depend on us to bring them home. Remember all who served with them, called them comrade, who depended on their courage, strength, and skill, and who called upon them, for they surely have not forgotten you. They will remember what we wounded. Please honor and remember them. Ladies and gentlemen, please charge your glasses. Let us now raise our water glasses in a toast to honor America's prisoners of war and missing in action, and to the success of our efforts to account for them. Thank you very much. seminars and trainings and all kinds of stuff to support the community and businesses. 
And so uh, we believe that Chamber is your resource of prosperity. It's led by an amazing staff and volunteers. And so there's lots of committees, lots of places you can serve. Uh, this year our theme was Driven for Success by our chair, Dean Safe. And so, it, well, I say the cars don't drive themselves, but maybe they do now. <laughs> But the chamber doesn't drive itself. It takes uh, lots of volunteers, and you have a place in the vehicle to drive and to, to help set the future. So we want to encourage you to do that. Uh, there's on your table, there's a list of, list of upcoming events. There's a QR code, you can scan that. Uh, if you take a picture today, uh, take some photos. I mean, there's some great photo opportunities already. I should have seen it. There's lots of photo opportunities uh, that you can take. And if you do, please hashtag Corona Chamber uh, and post that. I know uh, people that understand that will, will appreciate it and be able to follow that. So uh, I want to encourage you to stay to the end. We've got door prizes. You can go back and, and support our exhibitors and get to know them a little bit. And finally, you want to meet new people, but really I'd like you to thank the veterans in the room before they leave. Just make sure you thank them. This, all the veterans were able to have a free breakfast and, and cut this event free. So it takes sponsors to do that. And so I want to acknowledge the sponsors today. Uh, Altura Credit Union. Uh, Veteran Air. And also the Corona Chamber Foundation. So, so we're going to keep things moving. So I'm going to call the person that's going to be on deck next, so you come to my right, your left, uh, line up quietly when it's time to do that so we can keep things moving. So we'll start with this. We'll see if he can follow directions. Dean, safe, you're on deck. Oh. He's married for a long time, I know he can follow directions. Oh. Men in the room that are married, you understand that, right? 29 years, I follow directions really well. So it's my honor to, to welcome uh, our mayor from Norco, Robin Grudemeyer, for some beautiful words. So Robin, are you here? I didn't call her up there, so it's not really fair. We'll move on not here. Okay, we will. Uh, so let me introduce our uh, military veterans active duty and reservists, please stand. Again, let us recognize you. <laughs> Veterans, active duty and reservists, please stand and stand. Thank you again for your service. Let me uh, acknowledge our elected officials and VIPs that are in the room. We do one clap for them, so hopefully we get this down. It's always a challenge at the beginning because everybody, this first person I always announce is very popular, so everybody goes crazy. So we're going to try to keep it to one clap. Uh, our Riverside County Supervisor, Second District, Karen Spiegel. <laughs> Man, that was good. Usually, it's a lot more rowdy than that. Uh, Council Member from Norco, Kevin Bash. School board members, President Mary Helen Ybarra, Vice President Bill Pollock, Board Member Stacy Nicola, Board Member Chris Rahagi, uh, RCCD Board of Trustees, the Secretary. <laughs> yeah, Secretary for Tiki Blumenthal. Very good. Uh, Western Municipal Water District, Division 5, Fazia Rizzi. Eastern Municipal Water District, President Phil Pauley. Military uh, installations we have, uh, Lieutenant Ken Swinson, which you already met. Chief of Staff from NAVC, Corey Chen. Planning and Housing Commissioner, Karen Alexander. Library Trustee, Connie Newham. Jamie Merchant. From Arupa Community Service Department, Bart Marino. Past elected officials, we have Jeff Miller, former state assemblyman, Dick Haley, former mayor. Riverside County Office of Economic Development, Director Susan Holland. Deputy Director of Service, Rob Moran. From Cal Baptist University, Dr. Tim Gramling. 
and from Riverside Community College, Dr. Monica Green. Also from Karen Spiegel's office, Supervisor Spiegel's office, Chief of Staff, Phil Polly, and Field Representative Melanie Bonilla. Good job. Let's hear it for all of you. I apologize if I anyone. So uh, but we'll move on to that. I just want to also acknowledge uh, if anybody here is on the board of the Chamber of Commerce, can you just stand as we can acknowledge you, volunteers? Also, past board members, I see a few in the room. Let's acknowledge the past board members. All right, on deck will be our new members to the chamber from October through November. So you can line up over here to find Desiree and Robert. And uh, so now let me introduce uh, Dean Safe, who owns uh, and operates Car Star All Cup Star Collision. Uh, he really appreciated all the rain last night and yesterday. It's always good for business. <laughs> Crunch, yes. Uh, Dean serves on many boards. He's a giver and gives back to the community and uh, stepped up. I've, I've relied on him many times over the years. I've known him for probably 20 plus years. He's a great man and uh, loves his country. And so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dean Safe. Thank you, John. You know, uh, my business, we're like farmers. We pray for rain. Right? Um, we have uh, we have every year we have ten good morning coronas and this is by far my favorite. So I get the most emotional at this one. This morning corona. Anyways, we have a great year planned for you in 2024. Our chamber board is working on major plans, and we will be sharing uh, all of these in our January issue of Corona Business News. Much taller than <laughs> Our holiday uh, mixer will be Monday, uh, December 11. So scan this QR code and uh, plan to be that it will be great. Uh, this is a members only event and it will be hosted at ETC Thai Sushi. And so that QR code uh, will give you all the information you need. And then also please mark your calendars for our installation of the board. Uh, directors for Corona Chamber. Um, we will welcome and install my friend Dr. Anthony Bertano yeah. as, our, as our board chair for 2024. Oh, Additionally, two people clap. Two people. Two people. I think in my year, more people clap. <laughs> Additionally, we will honor many businesses with newly noted recognition. And that will be on Thursday, February 1st, at, right here at Eagle Glen Golf Club. Uh, we have a QR code. The theme, obviously, is Italian because Dr. Pius, uh, right? Sure. Descendants of Italians, you know. Uh, I'm descendants of Iranians. I, I don't think we used anything back then. You know? <laughs> I'll keep it myself. Anyways, thank you for having me. Yeah. When you grow up in a country where you don't have freedoms, you really appreciate what we have in America. Sometimes we, you know, those of us that are born here and have freedoms, we take them for granted. Uh, maybe not so much in this room, but uh, a lot of people out there take the freedoms we have for granted. And um, today, these kind of uh, are reminders that freedom isn't free, and that uh, someone like Dean, who came from another country where there was no freedoms, uh, could live in America and pursue his American dream. So, thank you, Dean, for being here. <laughs> I'm Jack, this is for crediting you. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Robert Ganez, membership development coordinator for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Robert does an amazing job in. Uh, helping new members get acclimated to the chamber and to promote their business. So he's going to introduce the new members who joined recently. So Robert, it's all yours. Thank you, John. Our members make up this chamber. We'd like to take a few minutes to highlight some of them today. These members have been invited to the mic to share a 30-second intro about their business. If they start to go over, TJ will play this sound. <laughs> I encourage 
opportunity to meet them after the meeting today. I will introduce them one at a time. Not all of them could be with us today, but I wanted to introduce and acknowledge them all. After exiting the stage, please come to my left and take a photo with our board chair, Dean Safe. First, we have One Care, One Heart Care Service. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, One Heart Caregiver Services is a premier non-medical home care agency specializing in providing professional care management to elderly people and other adults who require assistance in their daily activities in life. Um, our personalized plan of care ensures that our clients will be matched with the reliable caregivers so that um, it will be best fit to their needs. And One Heart provides assistance with activities of daily living such as Okay, 
Security, Postal Annex, Bureau Clean, Emergency. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Union, 
They are headquartered in Riverside County. Their board consists of leaders in the community who volunteer their time. Uh, many of their board members have served our country in uniform. Um, they love to reinvest in the community. It's one of the reasons they're here today. Uh, they're very involved in nonprofits, community outreaches, and they're, again, proud partner for over a dozen years with the Corona Chamber of Commerce. And so today, please help me welcome Kathy Thayer with Ultra Credit Union. Good morning, everyone. Um, bright and early. Um, my name is Kathy Fair. I'm the CFO at Altera Credit Union. I'm also a longtime resident of Corona and happy to say that I am a graduate of the Corona Leadership uh, Program. So, with that being said, Altera, every year, Altera looks for ways to support our active duty service members and local veterans by um, looking for projects that support their, uh, their lives or enhance their lives. So today we have a special video to show you uh, featuring a longtime member, Zach Erb. He's also at our table here. Zach is a relative of Wyatt Earp. Uh, he's also a Marine veteran who served in uh, Vietnam. So, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Here's when we came back in Vietnam veterans. Here's a whole, our spiritual side of us that, that we had was gone. My name is Zach Earp. I live in Riverside. And I've been a member of the Altura Credit Union for you know, over 20 years. Uh, I joined the United States Marine Corps in uh, May of 1967, one year after high school. But it seemed like a good idea at the time. It's not about going back to school, but I'm cruising down to RCC to re enroll. Saw this recruiter sign and felt like it. Okay, good idea. Went past RCC, down, down to the main post office in that street. Upstairs, second floor, and the list in Marine Corps three weeks later. I'm off to boot camp. So I have all these my mom and dad saved, all the letters, and uh, everything for this time on that night. You know, send me some good, some good people, some good people. I put all that. that that's, that's very fascinating. Now, boot camp 85 recruits. Eighty of us went to Vietnam. Five went to radio uh, technology school, so they could be a radio man in Vietnam. And we, in October thirty-first, I landed in Vietnam. So I'm to uh, Second Battalion, First Marines, in a Gulf Company, Second Platoon of the Weapons. And I was an M60 machine gunner. They sewed me up with wire stitches. Didn't wire. Those guys go down and down. I had to actually have set the dentist that's VA in the hospital, and they took the dentist took a piece of shot out of my neck. Oh, my God. That is a little thing. That's, that's a little thing. He's finally done with the service after 50, almost 55 years. Placed on a temporary disability retired list. It was at the 23 September of 69. Thank you, Kathy and to Altura for uh, their commitment to the chamber and to the veterans uh, in our community. So we just want to thank them. So uh, it's uh, it's all about you, our veterans and active personal uh, personnel in the military. So we're going to celebrate you today. So what I want you to do is, you're going to hear a video come on. When your branch, if you're able, when your branch song comes on, please stand. Uh, and so we can acknowledge each one of you. So when that comes, so we're going to hear the video now. And you'll have the opportunity to stand when your video goes on. And then uh, we're going to pay tribute to each of you. So make sure you give a nice round of applause when each of the branches stands up. Thank you. 
What date is a mili what date is a military command? March fourth? Man, you guys are so bad. Alright, moving on. I'm pleased to introduce our Vice President for the Corona Chamber of Commerce, Desiree Ramirez, to introduce our milestone members. Let's hear from Desiree. Thank you so much, John. But before we start with our milestones, I just want to thank all our veterans that are in the room, and a special thanks to my father, who has been passed for some time, but he served in the U.S. Navy on the USS Kitty Hawk. So thank you all for your service. supporting a strong local economy. They believe in our chamber and our mission in advocating for all businesses, small and large. Each of the following members will receive one minute to introduce themselves and their business. And if they go over, TJ, you're going to play which song? <laughs> all right, after speaking, please move to my left so you can take a picture with our board chair, uh, Dean Safe. Dean? All right. All right, well, we'll, we'll keep going on. A thank you to the offices of Congressman Ken Calvert, Senator Kelly Sciarro, Senator Richard Roth, Assemblymember Sabrina Cervantes, Assemblymember Bill Saley, Riverside County Supervisor Karen Spiegel, and the Mayor of the City, Corona Tony D'Ario, for providing certificates. I had too much coffee, I'm kidding. All right, let's, <laughs> let's begin with our 10-year milestones. Not able to attend is Cap Medical. Let's please applaud for them. Monster Energy right here in our backyard. <laughs> Celebrating a 20 year milestone with our chamber, Eric Castle CPA. Come on up. Okay, wait. 
Hey, at least get the trunk of the tall guy or something. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. All right. Got it. Everybody look this way. Smile. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three. And one more. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. USS 
Ana Ancala AE25. His story is being shared. Um, he's going to be sharing his story. It's quite amazing. I can't wait to hear. And it's, uh, he's truly one of our American heroes. Thank you, Don. Don grew up in San Francisco Bay Area. He has played straight bass since age nine, performed with the San Francisco Opera at the age of 12. He's had the opportunity to sing on the Ed Sullivan Show. That's amazing. And what I found out, he's in an awesome four commercial, so you guys better check it out. It's won a bunch of awards. Um, after the service, Don graduated from Cal State Fullerton. Go Titans. Do we have any Titans here? <laughs> All right. Uh, with a degree in poli sci and began a 42 year career in retail and logistics. Don founded the Corona Symphony Orchestra in 2008, and five years later added the solo music, the Corona Symphony Conservatory. Don is involved in our community in various capacities, including former president of Circle City Kiwanis, treasurer of Christian Arts and Theater, CAP, Norco College President Advisory Board, CNUSC's Measure GG Oversight Committee, member of American Legion, Joe Dominguez Post 742, and Veterans Honoring Veterans. Wow, thank you. <laughs> with many, many talents. Don is married to Shelly Kindred and has four children and five grandchildren. In 2020, he was recognized as, his, as the Citizen of the Year from the Corona Chamber, and on Saturday, May 25th, 2024, please put it on your calendars, Don will be the Grand Marshal for the Memorial Grand March. It is my great honor to introduce to you Don Kindred. <laughs> Destroyers, destroyer escorts, 
uh, past ammunition, mostly uh, projectiles and missiles for them. And uh, that's what we did for a living. In uh, August of 1969, August 27th of 69, we were going to have an underway replenishment around midnight that night uh, with the USS Constellation. And it was a little after 10 at night, and we were just hanging around waiting uh, to start that underway replenishment, which was going to take probably five, six hours. And um, at 22.05 in the evening, there was a massive explosion on the ship. We didn't know what from, but it knocked everybody against the walls, on the floor, out of their bunks, uh, and debris flying everywhere. Uh, compartments filled up with smoke, couldn't see inside the ship. It was uh, chaos. And being on an ammunition ship, you kind of wonder, well, what did happen? We thought we were hit. We were only 13 miles off the coast of North Vietnam at the time. Um, we went to our battle stations, uh, they said too. And my battle station was director operator of uh, the port side, twin mount three and 50 cannons and waiting direction, and then we found out what happened. Uh, we have two boilers on the ship. You only use one at a time to propel the ship. And they were bringing the number two boiler down offline to start up the number one boiler before that underway replenishment with the Constellation. And uh, it flashed, did a flashback. And when it did, for some reason, um, it exploded. The Navy calls it a catastrophic explosion. And fortunately, the good news was it didn't blow out, it blew up. If it had blown out, it would have penetrated the walls with, where all the ammunition was on each side of the, uh, of the engine room. Uh, that would have spoiled our whole day. <laughs> so anyway, it blew up, which really took everything with it, including the stack of the ship, off the ship and left a fully loaded ammunition ship, uh, totally without any power, adrift uh, off the coast of North Vietnam. What surprised us at the time was no one came to our aid. No one for hours. And uh, I, I was at a, this breakfast about five or six years ago, and um, there was a gentleman and his wife to my right that I had a conversation with, and I'd like to know if that gentleman is here because he knows what I'm talking about. Are you here? Make yourself known if you are. Nope. Well, anyway, this guy on my right was looking at me. I had this hat on, and uh, he uh, he was looking at me, so I said, good morning, how you doing? And, he, and his response was, when were you on the Haleakala? And I said, 1969, 1970. He said, his response again was, were you on it when it blew up? And I was shocked to hear that because it wasn't a topic of conversation we really talked about. And I said, how do you know about that? He said, you gotta be kidding me. We all knew, we all knew about it. You know what our orders were? And apparently he was a uh, chief uh, on the USS Oriskany, another carrier. He said, our orders were to get as far away from you as fast as possible. <laughs> and that was a revelation for me after close to 50 years of not knowing why no one came to our aid. But um, I confirmed that with a couple other sailors, veterans now, that were on destroyers out in, uh, near us as well. They were given the same orders. So what, what stuck with me on that morning breakfast uh, here was uh, we were left behind. We were, you know, kind of given up. So there were 300 guys on that ammunition ship that were waiting for that next explosion that would have been our last explosion. Um, it took hours and hours, and they finally got apparently a very reluctant uh, tugboat captain out of the name to come up and hook us up with a chain and the tugboat was pretty small, so it took uh, um, it, it took quite a while for him to tow us into Danang Harbor, where they strategically anchored us out. They didn't want us in Danang Harbor at all, uh, but uh, there we were. Uh, we were a target the year before. The NVA had lobbed uh, 
mortars into the uh, ammunition depot in Denang and blew it up, and so they knew we were a target, and they wanted us out of there as soon as possible. Um, being a gunner's mate, uh, one of the purposes of being uh, of the gunner's mate division was to manage the inventory, which was ammunition, and also protect the ship uh, if necessary. Um, the, when we got into uh, the harbor, I was given um, an assignment to patrol the perimeter of the ship to be sure that uh, we were safe and no swimmers were coming up trying to plant claymore or whatever on the side of the ship. Um, I was up at the fo'c'sle, the bow of the ship, and um, I heard splashing in the water, so I looked over the side to see if I could see anything. It was too dark to see, so I shined the, flash, shined the flashlight down in the water to see what was going on, and there was uh, two guys, uh, two Vietnamese in a boat, right up against the hull of the ship. One of them uh, fired a few rounds from an automatic weapon, and I uh, responded accordingly, and, uh, and there you are, I'm still here in Fort Squire. So. <laughs> they did get a fleet tug into Da Nang Harbor two days later on the 29th of August and got us out there. So uh, it took us back to the Philippines where we were repaired and went right back over and continued doing our job. So that was a character building experience for 300 guys, I'll tell you. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about is Welcome Home. Um, Welcome Home in 1970, uh, that term didn't exist. Uh, those of you that were in, in the Vietnam War or, or era know that. If you were in uniform, uh, you were to be tested. You were not liked. Um, you all have stories about that. I know you do. Uh, some, some of you share those stories. Some, some of you don't. I normally don't, but I'm doing this for Bobby. Thank you. Yeah. So... Day three of being back on American terra firma after we got back from overseas, we um, we were at, the ship came back to San Francisco, Hunter's Point, and uh, I bought a car on day two, uh, just a bomber Pontiac, just to get around. Um, I was born and raised in the Bay Area, so uh, I wanted to show a friend of mine around around the Bay, and we did. And we went around, and one of the last stops you wanted to see Stanford University. Well, Stanford, um, we didn't know it, but uh, all the windows were blown out, all the windows were broken. Uh, they apparently had just had a riot at Stanford. And uh, anyway, that's the Stanford University we saw. Um, we stopped McDonald's on the way back to the ship. Uh, to get a couple hamburgers on the way back, and uh, uh, we were walking back across the parking lot, and we were identified by a bunch of guys that, uh, that identified us as military, and the derogatory conversations turned into violence immediately, and uh, we were beaten so badly with um, pipes and fists that I was totally unrecognizable in that parking lot. And, um, yeah, and uh, anyway, and I was stabbed in the back and in the side during time as well, and I forget, in the parking lot. So anyway, that was my welcome home. <clears throat> the good news is things have changed, and I'm so glad they've changed. The pendulum has swung, patriotism, patriotism is back. Uh, thank you for your service, it means something today. And I just thank God that it has. I, I thank the chamber, Bobby, for doing this and recognizing veterans. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much.
on a, a destroyer in, in Vietnam also. So, um, so again, thank you and welcome home. So, uh, okay, so I want to give a couple thank yous before we move on to the next thing, and then we're going to do a, a door prize. By the way, the Altura donated the uh, centerpieces. So whoever's birthday is the closest today can take those centerpieces home. So, and then you can tell your wife you bought that for her. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry. So, that's what I would do. John, 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 I want to make sure all the veterans know we're going to be calling you up here by branch in just a couple of minutes to be prepared. There go. I want to just thank our sponsors and, uh, for helping out today. Uh, TJ at Rhythm Tech Production and his crew, I want to thank them for being here. Very good. Mr. Jim Dorsey with our photography for always uh, volunteering his time being here. All right. And Master's got it early to set up, all the exhibitors in the back that got here early. Thank you guys. All right, so we have our door prize. We picked a winner. Look at this fabulous thing that it was too big for me to carry, so I had Robert do it. He's got more muscles than me. So we did this from the registrations, any of the veterans that registered, but you do need to be here because some veterans that registered are not here right now. Is Char uh, Marine Corps Charles Merrick, M E R R I N? All right, he's here. Yeah. next year. Bobby's giving away a car next year. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. All right. So they go through in. Okay. More prizes. Okay. So the foundation has a flag and flag placement to John Wigan. Oh wait a minute. Sorry. Read the name wrong. Uh, Jeremy Goins with CNSUD. Are you here? All right. You get the flag. This, you can see Captain Run and then uh, Mayna Mayna. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing it right. Okay, very good. Oh, I know you. That's true. Okay, flying placement for the pastor. Very good. Uh, okay, so now as we prepare for the final segment, uh, we're going to honor our veterans in active duty. Uh, so I'm going to ask that the uh, elected officials come forward. Also, 2023 and 2024 board chairs, as we're going to announce each branch. And when you hear your branch, please come forward to the stage. And it's going to be quick. We're going to have you announce your name, the years you served, and where you were stationed. That's it. Just your, We want to be out of here by noon. We want to, your, your name, years you served, and where you were stationed. Yeah. And then uh, upon completion, then you're going to stay up on stage, and we're going to take a photo. And uh, so you're going to all receive a challenge point from our chair, Dean Safe. Uh, Dr. Peritano is going to present you with a star from a retired flag courtesy of Johnny Griffiths, founder of Veteran Honorary Veterans. And you're going to get a certificate that Bobby Hand wrote uh, for, the, for each one of you that we uh, have signed by our chair, Bobby, and then uh, our mayor in the city in recognizing you for your service. So. Uh, Let's see, Joel Nodick of Affleck will present a special gift. Additionally, you'll receive a certificate. So, we're going to call them up by uh, branches. So, the first branch when you come up, uh, if you can walk up on stage and make it up here, great. If you want, we can have, we can have a lot of microphone in the front. Okay, they're supposed to be setting up for chairs right now, right? No, no, no. Not yet? Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Coast Guard, if you were in the Coast Guard, please come forward so we can honor you. Come on up. Oh, well, these kind of apply until they get up here. Come on, let's go. John Dewey, 1966 to 
get a photo up here? All right, let's get a photo of anybody else. All right. Come on over here so you can be part of it, okay? All right, let's hear from the postcard. All right, next, Air Force. You served in the Air Force, you're currently serving, please come forward. Frank Epson, 
the Southern Conservative side of Charleston, South Carolina, and 90, but 87 to 91. Joe Matthews served next 97 to 2001, San Diego, California, USS Paladin Valley J5. Okay, we have five of you want to get in the front, we'll put you down. Any of you want to go down, take a step down, and we'll sit in front so we get the photo. Thank you. 
Williams, and I was in a bed with the Karen Williams, where the pussy baby was. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maurice. Last one, last but not least, the 
Army. Okay, so Station Fort Bragg, North Carolina, 2010-2014. One deployment 
to Bob Salerno Afghanistan.
Secretary for this service since 2006. Like she said, just recruited my phone. Good morning. Specialist E5, James Clark, Jim Clark. First Brigade, First Field Artillery Battalion, 56th Field Artillery Brigade, Persian Tactical Missiles, Germany, 71 to 74. And let's hear it for the uh, Army. Good morning. You ready to go for it? Go to the 2nd Military Police Battalion and you know, Station 48 Bridge for two and a half years. There's two more. Okay, go to the 2nd. Trent Ryan Brisher. Uh, I served from 68 to 71. Ray Russell, signed to the 72nd Army Band, was an E4. I spent uh, some time in a very dangerous place, in the San Pico. <laughs>